All right, I've got breaking news. The Pentagon finally admits it investigates UFOs. That's right, the Pentagon finally admits it investigates UFOs. Unbelievable. So they're saying UFOs and aliens are real. There's an alien right there. There is an alien. And right there, we've got the Easter Island statue right there. So what do you think? Do you think, uh, you think aliens are real? Do you think UFOs are real? Are you scared of them? Are you scared of UFOs? Aliens? Don't be. Don't be because guess what? If UFOs or aliens are real, if they are real, then their technology is so advanced they could wipe us out in two seconds. Completely wipe us out. They could probably explode this planet. Do you remember seeing Star Wars with the Death Star? And what was that planet that they blew up in, in Star Wars? Uh, Princess Leia, you know, I felt, and, and Obi-Wan said, I just heard the screams of a million people or something and that planet blew up. If you know the name of that planet, put it down in the comments. I have no idea. It was in the original Star Wars movie, I believe. I went and saw that. I was a teenager. I think it came out in 1977. I went and saw that in the big screen theater at that time. That was a pretty cool movie. So Star Wars, UFOs, aliens. Um, so, again, don't worry about aliens and, and UFOs if they were real. If they wanted to take us out, they could, they would, and they could, and they would have already done it if they wanted to they don't um, there's a lot of people talk about it they say there's an international society or group or rules and intergalactic cosmic rules and they say that the rules are they can't interfere with life you can't interfere with life on any planet um, I know that I do know aliens and UFOs are real I've got a couple of stories for you but first I'm gonna read the story okay this just came out today, today, hot off the press. The Pentagon finally admits it investigates UFOs. All right, and this is some New York Post or something. Um, the Pentagon has finally uttered the words it always avoided when discussing the possible existence of UFOs, unidentified aerial phenomena. It admits that it still investigates all reports of them. In a statement provided to the Post, a Department of Defense spokesman said a secret government initiative called the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program pursues and researches and investigates unidentified aerial phenomena right now to this day. And I guarantee you they've been doing it. They've been doing it since they've been doing it actively since 1946 or 1947. The Roswell crash was real, people. It was real. If you don't believe me, uh, Colonel Corso, Colonel Philip Corso wrote a book called The Day After Roswell. I suggest you get the book. You can get a used one on ABE Books or Amazon Cheap or, or eBay. Super cheap. Get the book. It's called The Day After Roswell by Colonel Philip Corso. This guy was a World War II hero. He helped coordinate the uh, rounding up of all the Germans. In Italy, um, he was in World War II. He served in the Pentagon. He, uh, he was a powerful guy. You got to read the book. Don't believe me? Read that book. UFOs, aliens, the Area 51 crash, real. All real. Okay. Um, all right. The DOD says, uh, DOD spokesman says that the department still, spokesman Christopher Sherwood still investigates sightings of alien spacecraft. The Department of Defense is always concerned about maintaining positive identification of all aircraft in our operating environment, be it alien or domestic, as well as identifying any foreign capability that may be a threat to the homeland, Sherwood said. So, you know, other countries could develop UFOs and fly them over a USA. We've got to investigate that. And here's the thing. A lot of people think that the Germans um, developed UFOs, and they're in, at, they're in Antarctica. And if you look up uh, Byrd, uh, Admiral Byrd went to Antarctica in the early 
in the late, I think in 1946, they went right away. They had this huge operation. It was the biggest operation ever uh, done by the Navy. And they went to the Antarctica, and they were chased out. Um, the Germans or aliens, I don't know, had a base there. Have, they still have a base there. They had UFOs. They had, they had craft that we couldn't even touch. And they blasted us out of the air and chased us out, and we've never been back. And to this day, there's uh, in Antarctica, there's there's no fly zones. You can't go there. There's certain spots you cannot go. Um, but uh, I'm getting off track here. Okay. Department will continue to investigate through normal procedures reports of any unidentified aircraft encountered by U.S. military aviators in order to ensure defense of the homeland and protection against strategic surprise by any adversary, be it um, earthbound or extraterrestrial. Nick Polk, who secretly investigated UFOs for the British government during the 1990s, called the DOD's comments a bombshell revelation. So they're saying they've never really said this uh, publicly, but they've had lots of investigations where they've, investigated it before we've had project grudge blue book all that i don't understand this but i guess it's a big deal pope a former uk defense official turned off or said previous official statements were ambiguous and left the door open to the possibility that aatip was simply concerned with next generation aviation threats from aircraft missiles and drones as skeptic Skeptics claim. I don't know what AATIP is. If you know what that is, put it in the comments. This new admission makes it clear that they really did and do study UFOs in any alien spacecraft that they find flying around now. It also shows British intelligence. It also shows the British influence because UAP was the term we used in the Ministry of Defense to get away from the pop culture baggage that came with the term UFO. So they don't use UFO, they use UAP. Identif unidentified aerial phenomena is probably what that is. John Greenwood Jr., whose website, the Black Vault Archives, declassified government documents on UFO reports, Bigfoot sightings, and other subjects, also called the Pentagon's use of the term unidentified aerial phenomena unprecedented. Unpre Boy, I can't say anything today. It's very frank. So they, they call it unidentified aerial phenomena, and it's he's happy about that. I'm shocked that they said it that way, and the reason is they seemingly work very hard not to say it. So now they're saying it. So I think it's a pretty powerful statement because now we have actual evidence, official evidence, that said, yes, AATIP did deal with UAP cases, phenomena, videos, photos, alien abductions, alien craft landing, um, the whole nine yards. Greenwald said he hopes that the Pentagon will release more information about the AATIP, either by voluntary disclosure or through requests under the Federal Freedom of Information Act, which everybody says FOIA. But at least we're one step closer to the truth, he said. The existence of the AATIP was revealed in 2017, along with a 33-second DOD video that shows an airborne object being chased by two Navy jets off the coast of San Diego in 2004. At the time, former Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid took credit for arranging $22 million in annual funding for the AATIP, telling the New York Times it was one of the good things I did during my congressional service. Reid's home state of Nevada hosts the top-secret installation known as Area 51, long rumored to be the storehouse for alien craft that crashed in Roswell, New Mexico. They don't just store it there. They reverse engineer it there. And there's been many crashes um, that you've never heard of that they've recovered craft and alien beings, live ones, and they have taken them to Area 51 to reverse engineering. Bob Lazar did that. Look up Bob Lazar if you've never heard of him. He went to Area 51 and helped reverse engineer actual craft from another planet or another dimension or maybe another country that developed it. I don't know. Now, 
There's another book I want to give you a little hint on. It's called Above Black. You can look it up. A long time ago, this guy wrote this book called Above Black, and he was a United States Air Force um, officer that was recruited to actually communicate with a live ETB, extraterrestrial biological entity. And he did it. And he went to this ultra top secret place. I won't give the book away. Again, the book is called Above Black. That's all it's called. You can go look it up on the, on the web. Maybe you'll find it. I got it for free a long time ago when it was given out free. But now I think he's charging money for it or maybe it's free. But it's been around for a long time. But you got to read it. I won't give it all away, but he does communicate with an actual ETB. It's real. He didn't make it up. 100% real. So go get that book. Now, a couple of stories. I talked to an actual airline pilot, okay? I won't mention what airline. I won't mention where it was. He was an airline pilot. Him and his co-pilot were flying over one of the Great Lakes. I'm not sure which one. They're wide awake. It's at night. He sees a craft fly ahead of him and fly right into the water. A big craft. And it didn't splash or anything. It flew right into the water. And it was a big craft. He didn't say how big it was, but he said it was big. And um, he looks over at his co-pilot and said, Did you see that? And the guy said, Oh, you mean that thing that went in the water? And he said, yeah. He goes, no, I didn't see it. And he goes, okay, I didn't see it either. But here's the thing. When you report something like that, you got to remember, these pilots and co-pilots, that's their job. That's how they make their living. If they reported that, they would go under psychological analysis. They'd call them crazy. They would uh, mass hysteria. Oh, you both saw it. You're both hallucinating. You're drinking. You're, you're on paid administrative leave. They just demonize you, and they all know it's real, but they have to do that because they don't want the general public to know about this. There are extraterrestrial craft out there. If you talk to 10 people, you'll hear 10 stories. Personally, myself, I was a kid in the 60s. I had binoculars. I just got myself some pretty powerful binoculars um, for Christmas, and it was the summer. It, we snuck out. Um, probably two or three in the morning and I had the binoculars and I was, it was pretty dark back then not a lot of lights I was looking straight up I mean straight up thousands of stars and the cool thing is there was layers of stars right so you got layers well I see this star it looked like a star to me cruising though just cruising from you know left to right let's just say I just kept watching it and it was it was it was in the middle of the layers of stars. So it was that far out. Then it just stopped. So I kept looking at it. And I kept looking at where it stopped. And then all of a sudden, I, it was probably 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. It started moving again, but at a complete right angle. So it was going like this. And it went straight up. I mean, it went at a complete right angle. It was unbelievable. And back then... This was way out there, past, it was in the layers of stars. And back in the 60s, we did not have satellites that did that, that could stop and change directions. Now, I swear on 100 stacks of Bibles, I saw that. 100%. I was, I don't know how old that was, 15, 14, 15, I don't know. But I swear on a stack of Bibles as high as your head that I saw that. Now, that thing was moving, stopped. And went at a 90 degree angle. Nothing we had in the 60s, even in the 70s, I think, could do that. That was an extraterrestrial craft. And it couldn't have been a meteorite or whatever. They don't stop and change directions. It doesn't happen. So anyway, that's my story. One more quick story. Um, a friend of mine said his parents, who are now deceased, they were driving in the 50s in, I think, New Mexico, and uh, they had a couple alien craft. Now, I can't remember if he said one or two. I can ask him. I still have, I'm still friends with him. But he was, they were just driving the car, cruising in the 50s. And this craft zoom, zooms in 
starts flying right next to them, you know, off the road, their exact speed, just for a while, paces them, and then just takes off. Now, we did no noise, no sound. We had nothing at that time in the 50s that could do anything like that. There were no drones. There were nothing. These people were as straight as can be. They didn't make it up. It was his mom and his dad. They both saw it. No kidding. And uh, my own father in the 60s again was looking off, and he saw a whole fleet of them. He said he saw probably 20 of them all grouped together, flying kind of slow. And just no noise, nothing. Late at night. So just ask around. You'll hear lots of stories. Everybody's seen, not most everybody's seen some kind of UFO. So those are my UFO stories. Again, breaking news, the Pentagon finally admits that it actually studies all UFO reports to this day, which we knew. UFOs are real, people. Area 51 is real. We've reverse engineered um, uh, spacecraft. And uh, no, we didn't go to the moon in 1969. Look at my other videos to see more information on that. I've got actual proof, so don't get mad at me. But go ahead and like this video. Share it. Get the word out there. The Pentagon admits UFOs are real. All right? So, signing off. Everybody take care.